regular board meeting and every night public schools order on October 18th, 2023 at 3.30 p.m. daylight savings time. With that, I'd like to welcome everyone here. And with that, we'll go to item two, Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you wish. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, into this law with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. With that, we'll go to item three. But before we go to the agenda, I'd like to welcome our new, new, new student reps, Krishna Patty, and the first, I guess, Patricia. Okay. You can go around the board if you want. To. Can you read the names of everybody? I can read those ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm John Burke with the board chair. Mike Egan. Sarah Gavarni. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm Pam Rainey. <laughs> I take the notes. <laughs> Kathy Nyberg. Kim McLaughlin. And I'm out here in the center. Thank you. And welcome on board. Yes. Thank you. Nice addition. Jack's name is upside down. Is it supposed to be? Not on purpose, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what he's meant. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's, that's kind of ominous. I'm just going to say that hope's not at home. Yeah. Okay, with that, we'll go to item four. I mean, item three, we approve the agenda. So, we're, so far. The way director McLaughlin, supported by director Nyberg, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried, thank you. And we're Kathy's gonna be the clerk for today also. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what Thanks. else am I doing Thanks besides for, signing? <laughs> that's part of the job. Okay. <laughs> okay. With that we'll go to motion item four, motion to approve the consent agenda. That there's gonna be a, an addendum in the item B and W. And those you know, read, like, B is to approve the hiring of Matthew Anderson as head boys coach wrestling and assistant varsity boys wrestling coach effective November 20th, 2023. And item W will be to approve the hiring of Ellis Wojciechowski as head boys wrestling and assistant varsity boys wrestling co coach effective November 20th, 2023. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Chair will support. Moved by Director McLaughlin, supported by Chair Berkridge. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye, aye. For the same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. With that, we will move to item five, public comment. Yeah, and I saw none, Mr. Chair. I'll double check, but. I believe my son then? Yes, that is correct. Very good. With that, we'll go to item six, administrative reports. Anything from the directors? Um, I, this is maybe going to be on the committee report, but I just was going to say, um, so I've attended two of the leadership meetings and I, Mr. Eldridge, is that you there? Yep. Um, and I just wanted uh, to commend all the teachers um, that have been part of that committee because um, we had our latest meeting yesterday. And I just thought it was really nice. Number one, Mrs. McDonald does a really nice job of leading those meetings. Um, but I really respect, too, that during those conversations, it's, you know, what's not working well, what's the struggle, what the reality of you know the position that we're put in um, <clears throat> as a district, district as class, as teachers, as principals, um, the hardship of the students. So it's not all you know just the good. They really discuss the things that they truly want to be better. And some of that, of that stuff is you know ugly and struggling, but they work through it together. Everybody participates, and I just think that they do a really nice job about that. And the, the, the goal setting, I love hearing about that because everybody has a little piece of input of, you know, 
why they should bump it up this way or look at this and other options. It isn't just a let's just check the box activity. They really set these to the students to be successful as well as reaching you know, the goals. And I don't know if you have any well, I, I just agree 100% that you know, this, this is my fifth year here and I'm amazed every day on how professional and caring our staff are. Mm -hmm. they, they truly are uh, good, good people and we're lucky to have them. And later on when we talk about contracts and, and approving contracts, right, that's a little bit of a pat on the back to our employees for, for the great work that they do. So. I, I really appreciate your comment, and I'm going to share that with the other committee members when we meet again. I think it's important that they know that you're supportive of them. Yeah, and I mean, I'm on there. I never say anything. I'm not there to contribute, but I am listening. I am, yep. you know, taking it all in. But I remember asking Mr. Berg after our first meeting, you know, as a new board member or board members, like, what can we do to help them? You know, sure, we can be in the, those calls, those yep. meetings, but really, what can we do to support them? And you know, one of the things that he said to me was, you know, back us up when we say this is what we need. You know, bring it to the board of, you know, taking our side on. You know, we may need a little help in one area to support that. So, what what's the committee called again? This is the leadership. And who all is on? Like, how many people are on it? I think there was about nine or twelve on the call. Yeah, and it's, sometimes it could be as many as twenty. There's is it like the department heads, or what is it? World's best workforce. Oh, world's best workforce. Well, it's 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 many different items actually. I mean, it, that's a piece of it, but it's okay. a district leadership team. So it, okay. it's it's really about um, it's about having leadership be shared. Yeah. Rather than everything just being top down. So, so is it admin? It's admin. All it's the admin teachers. Or? I, it depends. I mean, okay. yesterday I think there was a representative from every building on, um, um, and then there's teachers from every building on. Okay. Uh, it's just it's a work group. Um, it's just a and, work group. Okay. And Carrie does this great job of keeping everybody on task and, mm -hmm. and driving forward. We don't get bogged down in okay. side conversations. Yeah. It's she just does a great job. So well, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, is that John and I used to be on the world's best workforce? Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and this this was driven by the world's best workforce, but it it plans our PLCs. It, oh, okay. it, it, yeah. There's lots of decisions yeah. that come from that group. So. Nice. Yeah. How often do they meet? Once a month. Yeah, about once a month. That's pretty often. Sometimes yeah. more often, depending on what's going on. Yeah, yeah. that's nice that uh, that there was good discussion and yeah. problem solving. Yeah. Thank you for the update. That was good. Um, I just had one comment, John, sure. as a director. I don't care for the new consent agenda the way we do it. I don't. It's just it, it wipes out the whole meeting. Like there's no discussion on anything. I I'm just gonna put that out there. That's all. I appreciate that. And and just we can opinion. kick it back to the full order. But if there's any items on there, you you can always take them out for discussion. I know. It's just there's there's so many on right. there that I'm. I, yeah. I just don't care for it. I would concur. I just I feel don't. like we need to be more transparent. Give yeah. you know, an opportunity to have discussion so not only yeah. um, we can have discussion, but so the community is more of what's yeah. going on. There's, some pretty, there's a lot of work yeah. that went into this agenda and this consent agenda. Yeah, there is, and it it's doesn't. just like we whipped, we washed right over it all. Yeah. It's important yeah. stuff. So well, at the next meeting, we'll have a full board if we go off for comments, maybe go back to the way it was, but that's what we want. And I, I missed, I was looking through that file when we went through, but I do have a question on what you just approved, and I'm not disapproving it, but um, so when it comes to the wrestling, we, I knew we were losing Mr. Peters. So our, usually, you know, when we've lost one coach, no big deal. There's reasons for that, but yep. we're losing a lot in one sport. Is there anything behind that causing or driving that? I, I think a lot of the the when Mr. Pierce is hired, um, he picks his staff. Okay. So a lot of it is staff that was were loyal to him. Sure, that makes sense. Um, so the the plan with this situation, the plan would be there would be two more assistant positions that we would that we'd be still trying to fill. So that should be coming here. And the season starts in a little over a month, so we still have a little time. 
and I think the, you know, now that we have head coaches in place, they'll be a part of that discussion of who their assistants are and, and be able to help pick them. So, sure. Yeah. So it's co-coaches, huh? It is. And it's, um, what we did is uh, one of the individuals was, was really interested in being more of an assistant. I think both were kind of thinking yeah. about being more of an assistant. That's what I had heard. Yeah. But we we talked about being able to kind of share that load and share the responsibility. And um, with Mr. Anderson, um, I, I think Mr. Wojciechowski is very experienced and knowledgeable in the background of wrestling. So he'll be able to guide him and, and help him. And, and the goal, I think, the plan is hopefully Mr. Anderson is our coach maybe next year. And Mr. Wojciechowski would take a step back after mentoring him and helping him kind of figure the role out. Mm -hmm. If if his wife will allow it. Coaching two sports is a full time you know, job. Being a football coach, he's, he's really had a lot, and, and so I, I was kind of surprised to see this. But, so, do we know is the are the numbers large in wrestling? Wojo told me, uh, I just was talking to Wojo at, you know, just bumped into him type thing. Okay. And I said, are there a lot of players? And he said, like, 10. That seems way low. Oh, that seems very low. But maybe he meant of the older kids. I don't know. And are they going to continue the girls program? Yes. Who's coaching that? That um, hasn't been determined yet. So I talked with Mr. Uh, Turner about that today. We do still have an assistant coach. Um, uh, Mr. Rybacek that was coaching the girls, uh, and I, I don't know what his status is, but that, that's the next step here. But he didn't resign? He wasn't one of them? He, we've never accepted a resignation from, from him. From Mr. So we still have him? Yes. And are we still looking for a JV head coach for girls hockey? I think it was on here. Well, it says... Tony Carpenter. That's, he's an assistant. Burst, and then Christy burst. Fairchild is as a junior varsity girls coach. It didn't say, you know, assistant head or. Hmm. Do we have an assistant junior varsity coach normally? I thought last year we did. I think his daughter was Kristen Sunball was, but she resigned. So we have a head yeah. and a yeah. assistant? Yeah. Had so, an assistant on the varsity and juniors. Yeah, so I just wasn't sure because it didn't. I I didn't want to assume that Christy was the head varsity because it didn't say. But maybe that's what this is meant for. I don't know. Because it's just as a high coach or a varsity coach. I don't know. It says up. <laughs> it says up. Yeah. yeah. So I, I will find sure. out for you. I I will I will find out exactly. Because I mean, hockey season's right around the corner. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll find out where we're at for you. Okay, thank you. With that, Abby, do you have anything? I've, I've heard um, that she, I think she is the head junior varsity coach. Chris, she is. Because you are a hockey player. I used to be. You used yeah. to be. Okay. Oh, so she's the head. Okay. okay. I believe so. That's what I've heard. I will. Yes. <laughs> but I do believe you. That is what I've heard from a few people, that she would be the head okay. JV coach. Okay. Christian, do you have any comments or anything you'd like to add? Not a very Okay. Still learning experience. Keep listening. <laughs> Did they have reports for us in general or not? Sometimes you do. Do you guys today? Anything that you want anything to share? About the high school, any activities, anything you want to say? Um, I can speak on the choir trip prior to voting on it if you want to do that at the end. I can do that. Okay, yeah, you go ahead and do that before we vote maybe. Or when, when do you yes. want it done? Well, you can talk right now. That's where we, this is for student directors too. So. Okay. Oh, okay. So, I know that the vote for the choir trip is happening today, but um, I just wanted to give a little uh, reaffirmation on it before you vote. So I think it's going to be a really educational and valuable experience for everyone. Um, I'm a member of the choir, and currently I'm signed up to go. But um, for me personally, the most important part is going to be visiting Pearl Harbor, because that's going to be one of our stops we go to. And I think there's just so much historic value to the trip but also cultural value, because not many people get the opportunity to go to Hawaii, let alone high school students. So I think it's a very good cultural opportunity and historical opportunity. 
Um, we are going to be doing quite a bit of singing there. We're scheduled to participate with uh, another Hawaiian choir, actually, and do a song with them. But um, we have two songs prepared. We're working on Somewhere Over the Rainbow for a Hawaiian song and uh, God Bless the USA for Pearl Harbor. So they're both kind of many mashup songs. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be an awesome experience to get the chance to go. So I think it'd be really valuable to uh, have as a part of the choir trip for this year. Thank you. Quite a few people have Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. John, may, may I ask the two student reps what activities they're involved in in school? Sure. What activities are you involved in in school? <laughs> um, I played hockey until this year. Okay. And then this is what I'm doing. This is my new activity. Okay. So are you a senior? I am, yes. Okay. So I'm also a senior, but I'm in Key Club, um, Northern Lights. So I'm yeah. the choir. And then, um, That's a for school and all activities. So yeah. a few other things. Are, are you on student uh, council, sciences. either of you? Mm -hmm. No, you're not. Okay. Thank you. Very good. With that, we'll move to item B, administrative and staff. Yes, we have, we have Mrs. Husko and uh, Tyler Glad here. Ms. Mrs. Husko is going first, I believe. Yep. I okay. So, just a quick little update from the Early Learning Center. My first year there, but can I just can I stop really quick? Just yeah. just so the board can you just dis describe your role and just you know sure. where do you, where do you show up every morning and <laughs> what do you do basically? So I work at the Early Learning Center. My position is called the Assistant Principal of the Washington Early Learning Center. But basically, what I do is just run the Early Learning Center. So that's where I show up every day. That's where you know I deal with kids there every day, good and bad. Not too bad, but it's very. Um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but off to a great start this year. There's been, it just ran so smoothly. There's been very few issues throughout the year. It seems like we've already been there for six months and it's only been six weeks. So the improvements from the first day of school, school till now are like huge. So it's going very nice. And Kathy was there one day for pickup and she thought it went pretty smoothly I mean, it's, as well. It's really a great system. Yeah. I mean, That's the whole pickup, the parking lot, how the cars come in. And and, and, and then how the parents wait, and then they open the door, and then the parents move forward, <laughs> and you sign a sheet, and then the names are announced on a microphone by a teacher. You know, she says, Teddy, come, you know, your pickup's here, whatever. And it's just smooth. It's amazing. It's like a machine. It is. And that staff, all the yeah. teachers were there last year, and I'll tell you that I would not be able to do what I do without them. So the staff is great, all the pairs are great, everyone there is great. The office staff is great. We all work together as just a team that just flows like it should. So very well fueled there, so. Good, okay. So back in um, the beginning of September, um, Mr. Ricker, an old teacher from high school, wanted had a retired teacher Thing at the high school here, and they wanted to have a tour at the different sites. So they came to the Early Learning Center um, that afternoon. About eight of them were came. Um, most of most of them I knew. I did not know all of them, but so they wanted to see the Early Learning Center. So gave them a tour of that, the Head Start area, the gym, the comments, the whole shebang. Then some of them were ex-teachers from the Washington. So like, can we go into the Washington too? So we went to the Washington, because some of that has been redone since they were there as well. Um, they just loved going into their old building and were, I don't know how many times they said thank you so much for coming, thank you so much for doing this on your Saturday, very appreciative of it and just couldn't get over how gorgeous and nice the early learning center is and just the openness and how the design of it was. So that's part of Tyler too, so good job Tyler. But yeah, so that was fun to have all of them there and do that. So that was early on in the year. Um, Enrollment at the Early Learning Center this year, we have four classrooms of Ready, Set, Go. And they have 18 in three of them and 17 in one of those classes. Each class can hold 20, so we're, but we can have nine more kids, but right now, you know, it's just, there's still enroll, enrollees coming in, and we are taking them as long as they were four by September 1st. So kind of the same guidelines as kindergarten. And then this year, there is two 
half-day program. So last year there was only one. So uh, we call it the three school because there is some three-year-olds, but there are some four-year-olds in it as well if their parents only wanted them to go for half a day. So 8, 10 to 10.40, there's one session, and then 12 to 2.30, there's another session. And there is 28 kids enrolled in the three school. So we have about 99 kids. Um, about 18 of them are out of district. So, um, so, Mandy, can I so open and roll to our district? Yep. You're saying, yep. and and how many approximately how many Head Start students? Sixty-ish or so. Sixty-ish, I think, was the last number there. Okay. So, so about 160 kids in the building on a given day, yep. roughly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, this year at the Early Learning Center, we added a position. Um, so the students would have uh, one class they went to each day for their specialist. Um, last year they went to a specialist, but it was different every day, and it was very, it was too much transition for the kids on so having a different specialist every day. So this year um, we hired Miss Allie, um, Allie Sandberg. She comes from Cook. The kids in the Ready Set Go classroom, so the all-day classrooms, go there every day for a 42-minute class period in the morning, and she works on all kinds of different social skills to art to girls and fine motor skills she goes in the gym and does like um, mazes with them and different things like them to try to get them moving and diff doing different things like that so the kids have loved to go to their room and it's in the Washington side of it so they think that's cool too because they have to go over to the Washington side a little bit but so she has been a good addition to her staff she works well with the kids she has just done her job great and then in the afternoons, she's so she's there till 11:30, and then she's with us in the afternoons too as um, uh, sub in our school. So she subs in either our school or the Washington school. So she's there all day. She helps with morning duties, busing duties, anything you ask her, she's willing to do. So that is a good addition to our program as well. Um, and last night, just we had our first family engagement night. So we have a, we worked with the, what's it called, Kirk Parent Advisory? Parent Advisory Committee, and we have a core team that meets with our, uh, from the Early Learning Center, and we planned our first family engagement night. We invited Head Start as well, and we had, um, his name was Magic Bob, I think his name was, came from, he comes up and does like adult with disabilities and different things too, so he has been here before. And we had about 50-ish people last night, so I just took a few pictures of um, what went on last night. The kids loved it, the parents had a great time, and he did some cool stuff. There were some older kids there that wished there was more magic, they told us, but it was four, four and under, but obviously if families came, they brought older siblings with us. So um, that was our first family engagement night, and then we'll meet again here soon to plan another one around Christmas time. So, and this goes along with kindness counts, and today we had that unity day and all the kindness stuff, so it actually played out very well, not planned that way. But. Um, another thing that um, we started in at the Early Learning Center is the Good News Call. So if a staff member or anyone recognizes a kid doing something that they need to be recognized for, maybe they're working on something, or maybe they just have helped someone and they're usually not like that. Um, they email me, call me, and then I will go and get the student, bring the student back to my office and call the parents and just be like, here, you know, I have so-and-so with me, and they're always like, oh gosh, what did he do? I'm like, no, nothing bad. Like, so this is a good news call. And the student gets to hear me talk to their parent, then we talk about the good things. They play with some little puppets in my office for a while think it's pretty cool and then take their picture with parent consent um, Tiff decorated this nice little bulletin board in the commons area that Tyler let us put up there and so once they get their picture taken parent consent can hang it on the bulletin board <coughs> in the commons area there and then also send it to social media with parents consent so that the kids can get some advertising for that so you, I just got the bulletin board up and just put the pictures up not too long ago, and you should see those kids' faces when they first saw them. So they thought that was pretty cool when they get to see their pictures up there. So 
That was fun. We get to do that, so I encourage the staff to continue to do that. Um, and then, like Sarah was talking about, this just goes back to our leadership committee meeting yesterday. We have talked and looked at data and scores from last year in the areas that the Early Learning Center is focusing in, mostly social and emotional learning, and all like the areas for um, the four-year-olds. They met most of their goals, goals last year, except for in social and emotional learning, so we're really working on that this year. Um, that's why with Miss Allie, she's in embedding second step into her learning, as well as the teachers as a social emotional curriculum. So we're just, we made new goals for this year um, to maintain, or of course to grow the social emotional area. So that was something that we did in our leadership committee meeting. And then just continue to working on building relationships with the staff and students. And I have had many meetings and chats with Head Start and just trying to collaborate more with them and making sure we all feel as one whole family there. So I think that is all I have for you. Questions on anything? I have a question, and this is perfect timing. I didn't realize I'm going to be here. Oh. But on our memorandum of understanding between Head Start and the Hibbing Schools, and maybe you don't have to answer it today, but okay. one of the things that we work on jointly is recruiting for enrollment on <coughs> both sides. We help um, them and they help us. So I'm just kind of curious, like, what that looks like, what that means, and how we well, I know. Well, and I think that's part of what we're working on. And Mr. Aldrich can step in. But um, last year, I think there was some talk, but not much communication going on. And then sometimes we have Head Start students moving into the Ready Set Go classroom. So then, of course, we communicate about that. And then Ready Set Go students moving to the Head Start. So I know we work like that in trying to make sure we get all the information pertaining to that student. If we have a shared student, or if they went one program last year, moving to the other program the next year. Um, and then I think just working together to include each of us in their in the family events so that parents know we're working together too, I think, as most And, and I, I think another piece of this too is that if they, if they have a, a student that comes in to register for Head Start but um, might not meet their qualifications or not qualify, then they'll recommend, well, there's, well, there's an opening at the early learning center and vice versa, right, if yes. there's depending on the circumstances. So yeah. we work together that way too. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I appreciate that because I think as a board, when we approve the the addition of the early learning center, I mean, that's an important part of it is making sure that we can try to attract as many students as we can. So working together, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I had a question about the you said the need, <coughs> the most needed area is the social emotional learning, and you said that was from test results. Well, and that was they yes. So what just kind of test. So not test results. Assessment. Oh, okay. So they do TS Test. Gold, and the teachers do TS Gold assessments throughout the year with them, and that's just the area that was marked as one of the lower. So they areas. do that on that. every child. Yep. They do kind of an assessment, and that yep. was the area that stood out yep. for all of them. Yeah. All the teachers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No surprise, I guess. No. No, well, they don't make them sit down and like <coughs> do an assessment. It's more just yeah. like. Observ so teachers, observations, teacher and observations. Yes, yeah, teacher observations. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Joe. Is that anybody else going to ask? Mr. Glad. Sure. <clears throat> thank you, Andy. Mm -hmm. Chair, members of the board, thank you for having me. Uh, I do not have a PowerPoint presentation for you, but I do have right. some updates. Um, we had a lot of little projects going on this summer. Um, one of the bigger ones, of course, was here at the high school with the tuck pointing and building restoration company. Um, I'm sure you noticed all the lifts parked around the outside of the building still. Um, basically, starting in June, they started on the north side and washed the exterior of the building from the top all the way down to the bottom. Uh, washed, we tuck pointed, made a ton of necessary repairs just to help us keep water tight. Um, again, that was something that hadn't been done since 2006. So. It was, it was much needed, it was, it was time for it to be done. Um, 
yeah, they're, they're, they're down to the final last week or so. They're waiting on some brick on the south end right now <coughs> that, uh, that they have to match in order to finish that up. Once they're done there, they're just going to um, do their punch list and, and call it a year. Um, along with washing and retuck pointing, we also redid the, um, the granite steps out front. We cleaned those, retuck pointed those, um, ground down and sandblasted the front railings, repainted those to brighten those up a bit. That's something that hadn't been done prior to 2006. So again, much needed. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Also, we widened and replaced all the front sidewalks at the front of the building, um, basically wrapping all the way around. So. I uh, went from five foot side box to eight foot side box. That was so, really nice. Yeah. Whose yeah, idea was, was that? I suppose I'll take the credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was they were really deteriorated and yeah. um, especially for winter snow plowing our trucks will be able to stay on the on the side box now. Yeah. Um, it's really nice to have eight foot sidewalks. Yeah. Yep. Very impressive. And for all the traffic they get. It's yeah. much needed. Um, so yeah, they're, they're going to finish the, like I said, finish up on the back end there, and I do plan to have them back over the next couple summers to do the same type of work at all of the rest of our buildings as well. So um, they were a really good crew to work with. Um, out of Cheever, Cheever, um, we're still still learning how everything works basically um, with all the added programming and responsibilities. Um, there's different activities now every day. so. Um, we got a guy out there that basically starts in the morning and finishes up by noon and, and it's ready to go for whatever activity we have going. Um, over the summer we did install um, security cameras for the facility. Um, along with that we straightened up, removed, replaced a ton of the fencing out there just to make things look a heck of a lot better than they did. Um, and uh, also we made some small improvements for like the track team, the soccer team, um, added some gates, added some fencing, made the, sh made the um, jumping pits a little bit bigger. Um, so that'll help those guys as well. Um, our crew also, same thing, they've, uh, we've had so much new equipment that we've been putting together out there. It's just, uh, it's an almost an everyday thing. So they're still trucking away with that stuff. Uh, that's all coming to an end though. It sounds like our last football game possibly is tonight. Um, let's get a home playoff game or something. So, see what happens. But um, we also received those and installed the new lockers out at Cheever uh, for the home side. We epoxied the floor, cleaned it up really nice. Got those installed. They were donated by U.S. Steel. The quarterback club went out and, and chased a bunch of money, and they and they got it. So, um, basically, got about forty thousand dollars worth of lockers for for nothing. So, all we had to do was install, them, coordinate the delivery and setup, and install. So. Um, plan on doing the same thing to the other side of the locker room this fall as well. Um, get the lockers in, get them set up so it can be used as well. And then um, next when summer. When will that be, Tyler? Excuse me. This fall. We still plan on doing that. This right now. Yeah. You're gonna still get the other side of the lockers. Yeah, we have them. They're in one of the storage containers out there. So we'd like. Who bought to get those? Uh, the U.S. Steel. They so they, they bought. Side? Yep, they bought 75, I think, total. And we only put 40 on the, the oh. home side, and we're going to put the rest of them on the Because their donation side. was like 35000 Yeah, yep. That oh, paid okay. for all the lockers, covered all the lockers. Yeah, but I, I thought it was only for the the front of the locker. No. Nope. It's going to be the back. Both it? sides, yep. Wow. Yeah, yep. so that'll That's be nice. Good. It'll be good to see that get taken care of. Right. Um, also next summer out there, we're going to we're gonna open up the track to for community access. Um, don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet completely, but we're going to plan on having it open Monday through Friday, no holidays, just during our working hours. So people, the community members can go out there and use it, run on it, walk on it. Um, I know we've had a lot of questions regarding that. So hopefully we can help them out and accommodate the community as well. Um, otherwise, now that school's underway and those things are wrapping up, um, we're, we're already working on next year's list. You know, some of those bigger things are um, or roof sections that we got at, at all the buildings, basically pool renovations between the high school and the Lincoln, um, and the Cheever Owens Field Helps. We plan on doing doing a complete remodel up there this summer. So, um, along with all the other little projects, that's that's what we're working on, and we'll, we'll keep at it. So, at Cheever, are, are you doing the concession, a redo yeah. of that yeah. ball? The concession stand, the concession bathrooms. stand bathrooms, the press box, yeah, all of that. You're making the concession bigger. We'd like to, yeah. We're yeah. still not set on which footprint we're going to use, yeah. but um, that's the goal, yes. Do you work with ARI on 
design. Um, all that. We have, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, right. And Winseth is their new name. So. Uh, What's it? Winseth is their new name. Oh, I didn't know that. They they merged with another company. So. Did the bathroom that got vandalized out at Cheever get fixed? Yes. So it can be opened. Yes. Okay. Yep, that new door was installed maybe two weeks ago. I want to say the new door and lock was installed about two weeks ago. And this isn't anything that you talked about it, but I, but since you're here, it sparked my memory to ask. Um, I remember getting an email about the positioning of the new sign. Electronics. Electronic yes. Sign. Did, the, did we ever oh. figure out exactly where that's going to go? Or is that oh, for the high still? school, high school yes. you're talking. Oh, yeah, I sorry. I, I jumped um, from the Cheever Field to, to uh, this. We, we kind of put it on the back burner for okay. now just to make sure we can take care of everything else we have on the list that yep. pertains to the buildings. and um, So hopefully we can look at that again in a year or two. Oh, okay, so it's down the road. It was, it was, you know, one of the things that just, when we started down this path and started talking about it, the price tag just grew and grew and grew. And I think the last time we looked, it was nearly 140000 Yeah, more than that. More than 140000 Yeah, it was like $168,000 to be complete. So we just, like Mr. Alger said, it just, we had this pretty great, sure we can use the funds other elsewhere. Well, right we had now. this great donation from Jim Hendrickson, yeah. right? And, and, and it was a little bit over $200,000. And I just, to have three quarters of it, or maybe more, gold, I, I wanted to just pump the brakes a little bit and just see yeah. if that's the best decision. Yeah. And I know too, um, we have fall ball that is for the school that's coming up next, not this uh, weekend, but the following. And I know that puts extra work on your crew. So I wanted to say thank you in advance because I know it's sure. a little bit more cleaning for them, but um, you know, we do need their help and we do appreciate their help. So I just wanted to, yeah, thank <laughs> to you. throw I'll, that I'll, out. I'll pass that and I was going to say the same, Tyler, the schools, the grounds, all the schools, it, our facilities, they look amazing. So you. to yeah. you and your crew, a great. We, we, we're very fortunate, I, I've been wanting to say this for a while, to you guys especially, that we have our maintenance and custodial staff, they, they do, they take pride in it. You know, they, they really do that. They'll do the little bit extra without worrying about getting paid or if it's not in their area or they just always go above and beyond. Um, I can't thank them enough because it makes me look good, makes you guys look good, makes everybody look good. You know, so um, yes, a sh big shout out to them. Um, if you see them, tell them thank you. And I like that you sent that email about. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know the gentleman who's retiring, but I thought it was really nice to throw that out there, and then to see that, you know, we have those loyal employees yeah. who do stick with us. Mm -hmm. What was it? 20, over 27 years. 28 years, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's years, to me. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah. I sent him a little note too, but I just think it's nice when that comes from the direct, you know, who they directly report to that sure. recognition throughout the whole district. Yeah. And yeah. It's employees like that, regardless of your position, but that stay that long, that really make an impact and lasting impression. Yeah. So that lots was nice of, lots, of, lots of knowledge leaving with, with Jace today. And, you know, congratulations to him. That's his last day today. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you sure have a good crew. Right I do. I do. I'm, I'm very fortunate. It's, it's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much to them. And you. Thank you. Thank them. Absolutely. So, good report. Thank you. Thanks, guys. With that, we'll move to the committee report. Just one thing I have there is our collaborative committee will be meeting on Monday the 23rd at 11 a.m. And I was just going to echo kind of what Sarah said sitting in on uh, the meeting yesterday. Honest to God, our, our administrators and staff, I'm sitting there, I was just really impressed. And the way they're just so sincere and passionate about making improvements and already looking forward to building goals for next year. And it's amazing. That's very important. They're very nice of us. We're doing all that. Okay, with that, we'll move to item seven, administrative business. Sir Alex. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. I've made a motion to approve the resolution to accept donations, including a $600 donation from Owens Family Charitable to support Girl Southwall, $250 donation from the Evelyn Elks Club to support Sarah Nelson's sewing class, $50 donation from Bird Sports to support Amy Lawnall, 
fifty dollars from Birch from Ford and Company PA to support safety town, and one hundred dollars from Knights of Columbus to support safety town. Ah. Mm -hmm. Support. Moved by Director Gordy, supported by Director Egan. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. And thank the people for their donation. Item B is a motion to approve the MOU between ISD number 701 and ADOA -E for the purpose of affording mutually beneficial activities of the parties involved to provide better services for children and families served from July 1, 2023 to June 30, 2024. So moved. Support. by Director McLaughlin, supported by Director McGuardy. Any discussion? I, I just want to uh, kind of spin off of Mandy's presentation. I think this is an amazing agreement and, and what's behind it. So I appreciate all the work that goes into, into executing it, but making it happen and benefiting the kids and the district. I think it's great. Very good. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item C is a motion to approve the assurance of compliance with state and federal law prohibiting discrimination and to direct the superintendent to submit the report as provided by Minnesota statutes and rules. So moved. Support. Moved by Director Nyberg, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item D is a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement between ISD number 701 and the Hibby United Educators for the period of July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2025. So moved. Support. Moved by Director of the Office, supported by Director Nyberg. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item D is a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement between ISD number 701 and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Council 65, for the period of July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2025. So moved. Support. Moved by Director McLaughlin, supported by Director Egan. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item F is a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement between ISD number 701 and the Hibbing Administrative Unit for the period July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2025. So moved. Support. Board Director Nyberg, Board Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item G is a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement between ISD number 701 and the Hibbing Confidential Unit for the period July 1, 23 through June 30, 2025. So moved. Support. Move by Director Rewarding, supported by Director Egan. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item H is a motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement between ISD number 701 and the Hibbing Online Unit for the period July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2025. So moved. Or moved by Director McLaughlin, supported by Director Egan. Any discussion? Go ahead. That discussion, I just want to say in, uh, congratulations to our administration staff, <laughs> our teachers, and everybody else that's been involved. This is something you won't see. I mean, this, this is pretty amazing that we can get all of this done as fast and as well as you, you have done. So. Congratulations. I'll never do it this way again, Mr. Egan. Yeah. Four contracts at the same time, not a, not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you handled it well. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for saying that because I was going to wait till the end and congratulate everybody on both sides. I've been 20 years on it. Well, uh, I'm a late speaker. Yeah. Well, it was thanks to Trina, too. I mean, oh, I can't yeah. imagine yeah. the That's amount cool. of work that goes into this. And Pam. Pam also is responsible for the ASCO contract and those changes, so yes, it's a ton of work. Oh. And it was smooth. Everyone did straightforward, you tell it like it is, and, and that was a big thing. Okay, um, Is there any way we could combine any of these units? That, like the admin with the um, non-aligned or... I would say no. ...confidential. Or is, there's so many different unions. They're, and they're, yes. so, they're so unique. Uh, they are? You know, the okay. admin unit is, is really driven by the licensure that they hold. Okay. The, the There's some state statutes. Yes. And, then, and the non-aligned is the non-licensure? 
it, like Alex, head, head people. That's Joel, what I'm saying. Yeah, and they can't go in with the administrator. They. No, I don't know that they couldn't, but I, it's you know it's based more on the licensure that they hold in the credentials. I okay. Uh, and and also the how how they would retire under okay. what benefit if they're PRA if they're TRA if they're. Um, oh, is that what it's based on? It, that that drives some of it too. Right. Yes. I've always thought we'd have so many different units. That I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not arguing with yeah. you. I would love to. And they have all this. they all end up settling for the same percents, correct? Well, and that's kind of yeah. We try or to guide that. Subtle different. Yeah. Subtle differences. Maybe a few. Yeah. yeah. You're correct, but it could be one umbrella. It'd be nice. It'd be nice, but whatever. Not going to happen in my time. I don't think. <laughs> or mine, probably. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item I is a motion to approve the pay increase for 14 hour per week rates from $14 per hour to $16 per hour effective October 1st, 2023. So, so far. Mr. Director, supported by Director Nyberg. Any discussion? I just wanted to say I remember, again, I'm sorry, I don't recall the names, but I remember the lady who came and spoke about this, and I appreciated her coming to, I mean, it, it, to me it helps when they kind of come and Kind of make their own case yeah. and the reason why they're asking for it or would like it and um and you then to support that so i i think this is was the right thing to do for them especially nowadays with the inflation rate and these prices that are going up and jobs it's the way the world is so. and our 14 hour aids i mean we, we couldn't operate without them i mean they're they're essential mm -hmm. to everything we do here day to day mm -hmm. um, so and 16 certainly is not like that one. Right. You know, like you say, they could get a job probably other places yes. in town. Yes. Right. And so many of them are so committed to it. They, they are. are. Yes. And that's the important part. Too. Appreciate their. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was um, Lisa Rosati. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was trying to think. I have to know. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. And finally, item J is a motion to approve the spring choir trip to Hawaii in March of 2024. This is for Christian. Vote <laughs> 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 by Director Egan, supported by Director Barney. Any discussion? I'm very excited for this, and I agree with everything you said. Yeah. All Historical, favors. cultural, musical, everything. What would be Thanks. great is when you come back, because you're a part of this. Yeah. Meeting now, you can come back and Give do a little a presentation report. yourself. Yep. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. I wanted to get that in there quickly before anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We'll go to item eight, discussion items, superintendent. I don't have anything else, Mr. Chair. Nothing there with that. We'll go to uh, our clerk, which normally does. Uh, I have two things to do. One is that meeting is still on the 25th. In yes, the, it is. Okay. Right here in this room. Oh, I, not I was, in the auditorium. No, they 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 changed it. I I thought it was going to be all of our students. I thought it was going to be a big presentation. They narrowed it down to about 20 people. Some okay. student council. They picked yeah. some staff members. But the, I believe the board, if you can, should attend. What what meeting is this? This is we is have this? chairs from legislative committees oh, yeah, that are coming up on our tour. I'll send you another invite with the check times and locations. Okay. MDE school funding at, here at 12 o'clock at 12.40. Yes. Which, and what would you say it's going to be in a board meeting? It's going to be in this room. Now, and that's, okay, 12 o'clock on the 25th? Yes. Okay. Um, I will, I'll send you another okay. email or invite so you got the right information. Okay, the other thing on 1025 is Kim and I are co-chairing the happy birthday, happy 100th birthday to Giving High School celebration. Okay. Kim and I are. Okay. And our first meeting is five o'clock in the cafeteria on ten twenty-five. So anyone that's interested in helping out, okay. being involved, whatever. What time? Okay, five, 5 p.m. on Wednesday the twenty-fifth in the cafeteria. So all interested parties in this room, or if you know someone, you know, go ahead and invite them to come to that first planning meeting. So. My other thing, and I sent something to Mr. Turner, but I didn't really ask questions about it, but um, 
There was an article in the paper um, regarding some schools in the cities that have a class um, for you know repping all sorts of sports activities. And I know that we're running into an issue with some of our athletics where yes. we don't have yes. the referees. And when people, you know, when the base of the world retire, you know, who who is on our bench to fill those spots? Yep. And I don't know the Minnesota High School League rules or what we can and cannot do, but I thought the article was really interesting how they in school teach a class for students and it gives them then and I just was wondering if that's maybe something that we could look through you look at either doing as an elective or even just through community ed or yep. what that looks like because I think it would be killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, okay. that's a great idea. And it could be football, hockey, yep. volleyball, yep. softball, I mean everything under the sun. That's so a really good idea. I believe and I'll I'll check. But I think Mrs. Sakura is already on this. Okay. She mentioned it at an admin meeting a couple weeks ago, but I'll, I'll check on that. Okay. But I, I think she's already, this is a plan for a, a, one of our academies. Oh, Probably the teaching okay. and learning piece to. And I didn't even think to include her in that email that I sent to Mr. Turner. I just sent it to him being the AD. But I will, yes, and I agree. I mean, I think we're doing that. I mean, like what Kirk and the community ed program have done with swimming. Right, they basically found people, got them certified to be lifeguards so we could have a swimming program. He, he created the, the, the people that were trained. And, and we had, I believe we had the same conversation in an admin meeting, didn't we, Kirk, about the reference class with Mrs. Sikor? But, but I'll, I will, I'll follow up with you. And, okay. And the whole board. Because that, yes, I think that is a great idea. And we struggle. I mean, this year has been terrible. Um, soccer officials just any official, and the, uh, they're really dictating um, the price that they'll come for. They um, cancel at the last minute because they might get $200 at Northwoods where we're paying 160 mm -hmm. So we've had lots of last minute cancellations on officials, which just the pool isn't there. There, there just isn't people to draw from. So yes, creating our own pool, build your own, I think that's that's the way to do it. Just, is teaching a class at the college, I think. See, I think it, but it's a but it's a college class, and I think it's for credit, so oh. it's a different population. Right? Yeah. But still, the content should be something similar. You oh, would yeah. Think. Yeah. yeah. And hockey does a great job of that. They they find young kids to ref, and they get them trained, and <coughs> they pay them a decent wage, so they come and do it. So. Do they do a lot of hockey people? Um, yes. Yeah. But just to be aware that. The kids that would be taking the officiating class in high school are not going to be the ones that are going to be doing your Friday night football games. Right. Because state high school oh, yeah. requires them to be licensed yeah. at a certain age. Right. So I think this is more geared towards C squad and down for some of the youth. Yep. And then from there, they can, as they get older, yep. they'll replace the veins of the world. Yep. Very good. Okay. Without objection, the meeting is observed, uh, adjourned, observed, observed to uh, <laughs> 4.22, and I'd like to thank everybody for coming.